the price of physical silver is being manipulated and I have proof. Let's go take a look. Thank you so much for watching my video. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so how is the price of physical silver being manipulated? Why is it being manipulated? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to take a look at a few news articles, and then I'm going to give you my opinion on exactly what's going on. First off we're over here at sunshineprofits.com we have an article talking about silver manipulation it starts off market manipulation also called price manipulation can be defined broadly as a purposeful effort to control prices this sort of manipulation exists in financial markets as traders try to influence the markets it may be responsible for some short-term aberrations in asset prices including the price of silver however there is another more specific definition. According to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, manipulation is intentional conduct designed to deceive investors by controlling or artificially affecting the market for a security. This includes rigging quotes, prices, or trades to create a false or deceptive picture of the demand for an asset. A popular belief within the precious metals investing community is that gold is manipulated and the same goes for silver, generally manipulated downwards and what is described as price suppression. Now, I would agree with that. I would say most of us who are silver stackers are under the impression that silver is being manipulated. And I would say that most of us would agree that it's being manipulated downward. So are silver prices manipulated? More specifically, many investors believe that the market for silver is systematically manipulated. There are many variations on this theory. Some say that precious metals are under the thumb of central bankers, while others blame big banks in their use of derivatives, naked shorts, and high-frequency trading for the decline in the price of silver. Uh, one example of this would be when people say that JP Morgan is shorting silver. They're, you know, doing all of this trading to actually force the price lower. And we are going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but they go on to say there are also worries about the discrepancy between paper silver and physical silver. The fairness of London trading, declining inventories at COMEX, and the leasing of silver. Now, this part here is actually what I'm most worried about, the discrepancy between paper silver and physical silver, and uh, believe me, we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, at first glance, this theory makes sense, especially considering that the silver market is much smaller than the gold market, so it is easier to influence it, while a few financial institutions have already been fined for influencing or manipulating silver prices. Moreover, it is commonly known that in the 1960s, the U.S. government kept the price of silver frozen at $1.29 per ounce. Additionally, in the 1970s, the Hunt brothers for some time attempted to corner the market in silver. Whether they purposely intended to manipulate the market or not, their actions pushed silver prices upward, not downward. Um... Yeah, you know, the Hunt brothers, they were buying lots of silver, and part of it was because they didn't trust the dollar. They actually do talk about the Hunt brothers a little bit later in the article, but uh, this uh, chart right here, silver, bull, and bear markets, it's got this huge spike up, almost $50 an ounce back in 1980, about. And, uh, you know, that was when the Hunt brothers were buying massive amounts of silver, and then the price just tanked. So uh, over here, this was 2011 when the silver price ran up to almost $50 an ounce. You know, this chart kind of ends before the, uh, the run-up we've seen over the last few years. But uh, I want to scroll down here to, yeah, Hunt Brothers and Silver Thursday. So uh, let's talk about this for a sec. They say, as a reminder, the Hunt Brothers accumulated silver for a decade, but they were estimated to hold only one-third of the entire world's supply of silver without counting the significant amount held by governments. Moreover, their attempt to corner the market failed as the price of silver plunged on March 27, 1980, the so-called Silver Thursday, causing losses of over a billion dollars for the Hunt Brothers. Now, one of the issues that they had was the rules were changed on them. 
So they weren't allowed to take a uh, physical delivery of the silver. And I think that is one thing that's sometimes overlooked. If they were able to continue to buy silver and take physical delivery, you know, I mean, they were buying like millions of ounces. Um, would the price of silver kept going up? Probably not. It seems like it was, a lot of that was just speculation. Uh, but, you know, was that manipulation when they changed the rules on them? Uh, absolutely. That is manipulation to some degree. Now, earlier in the article, they did talk about some banks that got in trouble and were fined for actually manipulating the price of silver. Let's take a quick look at uh, this article here. Talks about how uh, JP Morgan was forced to pay $920 million for manipulating precious metals. You know, it's ridiculous that they're able to continue to go on. They're the custodian of SLV, a massive silver stockpile. It's an ETF, and people can buy paper silver, and they are manipulating the price. It's, it's ridiculous how much uh, manipulation actually is going on, but... Uh, the article says JP Morgan Chase and Co has agreed to pay more than 920 million and admitted to wrongdoing to settle uh, federal US market manipulation probes into its trading of metals futures and treasury securities the US authorities said on Tuesday now this was actually back in 2020 uh, here's where it talks about it. Between 2008 and 2016, J.P. Morgan engaged in a pattern of manipulation in the precious metals futures and U.S. Treasury futures market. The CFTC said traders would place orders on one side of the market, which they never intended to execute. So this right here, this is uh, that's straight up manipulation. Uh, to create a false impression of buy or sell interest that would raise or depress prices, according to the settlement. This manipulative practice, which is designed to create the illusion of demand or lack thereof, is known as spoofing. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of us would agree they were probably trying to spoof the price of silver lower. Now, of all the different types of manipulation, this one is the one that worries me the most, the paper to silver ratio. You can find this data on the usdebtclock.org. This number right here, 353 to 1. It's the amount of paper silver ounces that exist to every one ounce of actual physical silver. Now, this number is extremely high, over 350, but if we go back just a year and a half ago, look at where the number was then. This is a photo from my U.S. Debt Clock video I posted. It was actually in September of 2020, so it was right around a year and a half ago. But the paper to silver ratio was 179.39 to 1, basically half of what it is now. So the question is, why? Why is the number so much higher today? And I think the answer is that people are wanting to buy silver. They want to invest in silver. They're buying these ETFs like SLV, which basically is just a coupon that says, yes, you own silver, but they can never actually get physical delivery. It's not real silver. It's just a piece of paper. I mean, there is some silver that exists somewhere, but there's 350 coupons to every one actual ounce. I mean, talk about manipulation. If all of these people were actually just buying physical silver, can you imagine how much higher the price for silver would be? I mean, to me, this is manipulation that they let this exist, but that they let it exist on such a high level. I mean, 350 coupons for one ounce. This is getting ridiculous how high can it go could it go to a thousand could there be a thousand coupons for every one ounce of silver i mean there should be a maximum there really should and i don't know if the maximum is one <laughs> or if they want to you know give them some leeway say okay you can have 10 coupons for every ounce even that to me is playing with fire but uh it shouldn't be allowed to go as high as it is um i think that's the real manipulation that's going on, the fact that all of these markets exist where people can invest in silver, but they actually never get physical silver and they can't get physical silver out of it. One thing that we didn't really talk about is why they would want to manipulate the price of silver lower. And the answer is just obviously so that they could make money. Uh, if the price is suppressed and also if the price moves up and down, then there's potential for big banks to make money. They can have a short position on silver 
JP Morgan, notorious for taking out these short positions on silver and then, you know, spoofing the price lower. And obviously they can make money by doing that. So it's criminal, it's wrong, but it is happening. I am really curious what your thoughts are on silver manipulation. Feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section. And uh, if you have any questions, you can put them there as well. I do want to say a massive thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you all in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.